Hey, it's Monday once again. And with us tonight on VoiceOver Body Shop is our good friend Matt Dubois from VoiceOvers.com. You got a question for him? Now would be a fabulous time to throw it in the chat room. Yes, it would. You want to get that in here tonight. You don't get too many opportunities like this. That's so right. He's jump here on. in the flesh, you know, driving down the fives, you know, which is always <laughs> a lot of fun. Uh, but we also have Tech Talk tonight, and we've got uh, some cool stuff from everywhere. A lot of topics to talk about. So if you got a tech question, also throw it in the chat room so George and I can address it. Anyway, are we ready to go? Let's make it happen. Sure All right. Voice over body shop coming up right now. Two men, twin sons from different mothers, with a passion for voiceover recording technology and the desire to make recording easy for voice actors everywhere. Together, in one place. George Whittem, the home studio engineer to the stars, a Virginia Tech grad with an unmatched knowledge of all the latest gear and technology in voiceover today. Dan Leonard, the home studio master, a voice actor with over 30 years experience in broadcasting and recording, and a no holds barred myth busting attitude for teaching you how easy it is. Together, to bring you all the latest technology, today's voiceover superstars, and leading the discussion on how to make the most of your voiceover business. This is VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products. Source Elements, remote connections made even easier. VO2GoGo.com, everything you need to be a successful voiceover artist. J. Michael Collins Demos, award-winning demo production. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voiceover website won't be a pain in the butt. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live from their super-secret multimedia studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. Hey, I'm Dan Leonard. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. And time to introduce our guest who's driven all the way from, what, San Juan Capistrano? Way down there. Practically San Diego as far as we're concerned. <laughs> but uh, let's talk about it. Our, our guest tonight, Matt Dubois, is what we happily call an entrepreneur. Uh, he saw some needs and, and an opportunity in our marketplace and has jumped right into what we hope is the right thing when it comes to a system to help us all secure more voiceover work. Uh, he first launched Voice Casting Hub last year to great fanfare, and his latest venture is an entry into the uh, casting site world called voiceovers.com, which is launching this month. Let's welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop, Matt Dubois. And there he is. Thanks for having me, guys. All right. All that canned applause. <laughs> that was expensive applause. It was. <laughs> Anyway, welcome back to the show. It's great to have you here. Uh, Live studio audience, too. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the throngs here. <laughs> Theater of the mind, my yes, friend. Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> that bottle of water seems to be enjoying it. <laughs> Anyhow, you've been a busy guy. Uh, yes. Now, you started uh, Voice Casting Hub last year. How has that been going? It's been going pretty good. Um, the... Uh, it, it was there was a little bit of a challenges launching, and that um, that's a, a entirely different space than we we, we got into with um, voiceovers.com. It's a little more complex dealing with um, agents and producers and talent. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, we we kind of found our way a, a few months in, and um, every month we've been getting more and more auditions. We're growing at about geez, almost ten percent a month right now since we um, started giving away. Uh, auditions to producers on there. That's that was a big thing we did earlier this year. That's how you kind of seeded it, so that, to speak, kind of get the ball rolling. The you know and we were giving the first audition away for free um, for a while and charging per audition, which was kind of the common business model that um, for a site that yeah. was out there before that shall remain nameless. Mm -hmm. And um, the uh, you know the market's changing a lot, and we saw that that business model you know, wasn't working and said, you know, we need to provide more value and mm. just kind of change a little bit of the, uh, the revenue model. And, 
um, we started giving it away for free. So make it more accessible to casting directors and um, save a lot of paperwork for producers just to, I mean, they, 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 were, they were doing POs just to cast and then cut. So we cut their paperwork in half and um, we took a little bit of a financial loss um, with that. but Because um, of, of the front end development to make that happen? Well, you know, about 70, 80% of our revenue was from uh, audition postings. Oh, I so, see. Um, in order to, you know, what, there's another reason we, we gave it away for free, and that had to do with voiceovers.com and mm -hmm. being able to um, have these two platforms work together yeah. um, and be complementary rather than competitive. So, um, it was, I was okay in, you know, letting that revenue go because uh, I felt, you know, we can recoup that somewhere else and we can make it for the greater good of the industry. Right. Well, that's the most important thing. So what prompted you to start a casting site in a, <laughs> in a, a vast world of pay to play casting sites out there? The, um, well, I appreciate you calling it a casting site because I, I, I can't stand the uh, P to P uh, moniker. I always say casting site, casting site, casting site. So, okay. um, thank you. The, uh, uh, kind of with the same thing with voice casting up, just saw a need. Um, I felt that the voice, I've met, I've met a lot of voiceover, um, actors in the last year at conferences, um, from voice casting hub, um, prior to, you know, two years ago, I only knew one, mm -hmm. uh, Jules, my wife and, uh, hey, you <laughs> so, upgraded. <yeah. laughs> All right. Man. Cause last time you were on, it was your, it was your, it was your girlfriend. So. Yeah. 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 So Way to go. thanks. Yeah. Well, I guess the <laughs> website worked out. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the, uh, yeah, I saw, I saw a need and, um, you know, talking to all these, uh, voiceover actors, I, I realized that they, they weren't just, um, actors, that, uh, these people were entrepreneurs and, oh, um, man. No, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's so true. Yeah, that's the kind of business it is. It's not what it was 20 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, and, uh, and uh, the casting sites out there, I thought were just kind of geared towards voice actors and they didn't serve the entrepreneur and um then i was, I was like you know there's it, it's only serving the one side and these these people are so multifaceted they're not only great talent they're accountants they're marketing they have websites and brands i mean these are full-blown business owners and yeah um, i needed to create a site that that saw them as that and treated them that way yeah. and um i saw some i saw some ways that we could help with the rate deterioration as mm -hmm. well so yeah so how does it all work i mean what's different about this particular casting site than say the 500 other ones that seem <laughs> to be you know proliferating our entire industry um well it's going to be a lot better it's uh <laughs> than than most of them out the, well than all of them out there really the uh it's ease of use is the key we're really focusing on buyer acquisition um we studied a lot the 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 top really two casting sites that are out there. And uh, one of the things that they had in common was um, they were dominant uh, on Google and um, in digital marketing. They were very easy to find and very yeah. easy for the buyer to use. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I figured the best way I could, I could serve talent would be getting them more jobs. It works for me. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of the, we see some of the casting sites that I was talking about this is what we could do for the talent. And, you know, we're taking care of the talent and almost so much to the point where they've, they've forgot about the buyer and they haven't, they focus so much on the talent experience that, um, that it, it's hurt the buyer experience. And, um, I approached it a little differently and, um, just wanted something that was really easy to use. Um, that's kind of where I started. I got a chance to be the nerd that I am and do this decipher VO thing, which is something I'm excited to, Get everybody to get their hands on later this week. Um, What's that about? Decipher VO. What's that? Oh, that's this. That's the. Uh, that's my chance to really be a nerd. That's a um, an AI driven rate um, suggestion tool. So. <laughs> okay. Nice. Ready. Define <laughs> so, AI. So, <laughs> big buzzword. The um, I everybody is complaining about rates deteriorating and going down and um, casting sites right now. What I saw was, hey, you know, here's post it from five hundred to five thousand um, dollars. I'm no fool. If somebody tells me I could pay five hundred or five thousand. I'm paying five hundred dollars and right. getting the heck out of there. Right. Um, 
you know, if I, if I'm paying any more, I feel like it's, um, it's going to be too much. So, um, everybody wants a good value and I wanted to make sure that we led with value. I think if you lead with value, then, um, then price is a secondary conversation. So, um, I created this wizard that depending on who you were when you registered, so if, if you're a small business owner, a producer, an ad agency, um, that it would, you'd have a different set of questions that it would ask you. Oh, yeah. And this was a, um, a AI bot, artificial intelligence bot, that would um, ask you questions in your language um, about your project. And depending on the first answer you give, it would change the second answer. And um, what it was doing is basically it's a bot that's interviewing the buyer about um, and, and it's cross-referencing a, a rate card. Ah. And then it's just giving them, presenting them with a the price. Here's your price. Rather than saying, here's 500 to $5,000, here's a link to a rate card, good Go luck. Um, yeah, we said, here it is. It is $900. And check out, there you go. So and making it easier. Yeah, well, that's, that's, that's a huge improvement over, say, a live person you know, playing games with the, with the potential client. This is totally automatic, and it sort of takes eh, some of the human out of it, I guess, but at least it's guiding the client in the right direction. The, you know, Apple did a really good job. with When you're using technology in this way, Apple, I use Apple as an example a lot because they do a great job at implementing technology to, to make things better. They actually... You know, years ago when the RIA, RIAA was fighting against digital music, Apple found a way to um, charge more per song mm -hmm. and um, basically eliminate theft. And uh, they did that with iTunes. And now they're mostly a media company. They're more, more so, they're, I mean, in 2007, they stopped calling themselves Apple computers. And um, they're mostly phones and music now. And um, that kind of thinking where, they made it easier than stealing. So people were willing to pay more than they were before. It's easier than stealing. And now artists are making more than ever, arguably, with digital music. Yeah. Now, of course, I still have things from <laughs> Napster on here. <laughs> so, you know, I know exactly what you're talking but about. But they're still not convenient because now that you've got another way of listening to music, unless right. you've figured out a way to get it in exactly. there. Exactly. It's yeah. It's yeah. that's I'm paying gladly paying for a service that arguably I was probably able to get for free before because it's yeah. it's easy. Oh, it's easy. Yeah. It was yeah. It was twenty years ago though yeah. that that happened. If you're just joining us here on Voiceover Body Shop, our guest is Matt Dubois, who is the CTO of uh, Voiceovers.com, which is launching this month, uh, a new casting site. And if you've got a question for him, throw it in the chat room, and we'll be able to ask Matt that question. Hopefully. I'll cover as much as I can, but I know you guys have lots of questions out there. How are you pricing this for the average voice talent for starters? Um, we had an early bird special that's that's over now, but we're looking at um, there's an annual fee for two ninety nine, uh, and then there's a a gold option that's uh, forty nine hundred, and um, basically the two ninety nine option gets you on the site and gets you access to um, auditions. the um, The gold upgrade is a little different than the other casting sites out there in that um, because I saw these voice talent as entrepreneurs, uh, this is really a marketing upgrade. Um, we have three dedicated staff for the gold, for the gold members. Um, there's the gold memberships limited to 60. Mm -hmm. And it's basically a company within a company. So there's a, essentially a marketing and digital marketing company in voiceovers.com that has 60 exclusive clients. And what are they doing for, to help people with their marketing? So there a lot, wow. you know, we focus a lot on SEO. We, but we, we invested in this probably you know, the best domain name you could get. And, um, you know, that was, that's a good start. It was, it's not our whole strategy, obviously. Um, but, um, their gold members are able to have public contact information or contact information and in their website on their public profile. Mm -hmm. And we're building up backlinks to it, the, uh, their public page. So we're going to drive more traffic to the talent's website and get them direct business as well. Um, we're going to highlight them in um, on the on the top of the web page. So right above the fold, you're going to see... Like a rotating a, a banner? Ro of yeah, rotating banner. There, it's going to be gold talent, so-and-so. Here's their name. Here's a little bit about them. And then here's their um, profile link. Uh, we're going to send that out to buyers in the email. Um, we're going to highlight it in social media. 
we're basically just going to be relentlessly promoting them. Um, and that's really what the gold membership is all about is helping the talent get, be able to get a return on investment with marketing. Yeah. Um, and, and how's the interface going to work? I mean, if you've got, you know, you've got clients and they're looking for talent, are they just posting jobs and it's being automatically directed to the people who fit that, that profile or, or what? Yeah. The, so most of, most of the time, most of the buyers, what they want to do is they don't want to select talent. They just want to post their job. And then, um, we have, we're light on the algorithm on the, on the talent selection side. And this is something I focus. Um, I talk about a lot is we're heavy on algorithm on the buyer side. I, th I think, you know, and there's not a lot of sites that do this is that, um, we, we put all, all that algorithm work in making it easier to buy and finding the right rate. Right. And we put less of this algorithm work in the, um, in the talent selection side. And the reason being is, um, we have limited, not just the gold members, but the pro members. And if you, it's limited based off projected project volume right now and it will be limited off actual project volume as the site goes um the if your if your talent roster size is in direct relation to your project volume you don't need a lot of algorithms to help you figure out how to invite talent um the the people that have allowed five thousand ten thousand twenty thousand or two hundred fifty thousand whatever they, so say, they say so they say um on their site you know they and they have if you have 15,000 talent and a thousand jobs, you need an algorithm to help you figure out how am I going to balance these jobs, uh, not enough jobs to too many people. Yeah. Um, and uh, so they, they had to create these algorithms to address a problem that they started, that they created. So, you know, our approach is why well, create the problem? Just <laughs> oh, yeah. that helps. Totally different approach. Yeah. How are you going to market this to the people who hire us voice actors? What's cool. your, what's your thoughts on that? The, um, well, a lot, we're doing a lot with SEO. I talk a lot about that. The, um, the, the two dominant players in the casting site space really, um, are top on, 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 on Google and, and Bing. And, you know, again, that goes back to why we started with having that domain. I couldn't do it with any other domain. It had to be this word. Um, the, uh, we have a, a heavy budget. There's about 80,000 searches for higher voiceover a month. You could check that up on Google webmaster tools. Um, if you bought every single first place for every single search, it'll cost you 18 to 22,000 a month, hmm. um, about okay. a quarter million dollars a year. Yeah. So we put a quarter million dollars in the marketing budget and we will buy first place search for every term in the United, every, every search in the United States and Canada, higher voiceover, we will be number one. All right. And Period. Well, that's, <laughs> that's one so way. That's, that's, what, that's, that's one strategy. <laughs> nobody can outspend us because that is the max that Google, somebody yeah. can spend equal. Yeah. 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 But yeah. there's no more volume. You can't buy up any more space. So, right. um, you know, good luck to whoever wants to do that. Yeah. Putting the money where the mouth is. <laughs> yes. That's the definition thereof. Yes. Wow. How appropriate in this business, too. Um, <laughs> how are you marketing to. Uh, People who do what we do, uh, oh. mostly voice actors. Well, of course, you're here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there's, there's sitting there's in traffic and <laughs> <Yeah. equity. laughs> the oh, there's the, besides um besides the search engine, um, have two full time salespeople, um, and the cool thing about voiceovers.com, it's an entirely different experience than Voice Casting Hub, as far as like the front end, the um the types of buyers that use Voice Casting Hub are not the same types of buyers that use voiceovers.com, right. and um. It's not, uh, some people ask, you know, is it, is it bigger jobs or smaller jobs or certain types? The, it, it's, it really came down to honestly to age. Um, they were high level producers and, uh, advertising, um, production houses and, and ad agencies that wanted something that was more simple. They actually preferred a simplified casting interface. Um, and they, they were some of the people that helped us build the buyer interface for voiceovers.com. Um, generally is the baby boomers who really like getting they you know they're like 40 form, 40 fields on a form right and they're like you know if you put five more i'll i'll like it 10 percent more they really like to to <laughs> you know to to fill out everything they're very yeah. technical yeah. um generally um and then there's millennial gen y and gen x who you give them a form that has like 12 fields 
and they're 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 you know sending you a message. How can we get this down to eleven or ten? I'm, I'm I'm busy. You know, how can we cut down to right? And um, that's it. One of them is a highly automated and kind of predictive experience, and the other is a very granular and um, detailed approach. So, no nobody that likes this is going to use that. And so now our wow. salespeople have a um, actually have a full spectrum of offerings for every type of voice buyer. Do you do you want to get you want to get down to the nitty gritty, or you want to do? So salespeople are selling both. And yeah, they're, they're kind of feeling out who it is they're selling to as to what product is better for them. Yeah, based on who they're selling to. You can't push one type of person into the other. Yeah, in, right. into another platform. So you know when we have we had some agents asking, oh, are you going to start pushing this? We we can't. It's not going to. They're not going to be happy. It's not a good fit for yeah everybody. We can't push people. I mean, we could try, but it's not going to be. Good work. Voice casting hubs staying up, and um, we're yeah. actually putting some cool new features in it. Oh, good. Um, that you know, I could talk about a little later, but yeah. um, the and, and that's why we gave it away for free, so we could really make sure they're complementary and, right. and help each other are out. They, are they integrated in any way? Do they work together, or are they really two yeah, totally how do they separate? Two, how do they intersect somehow? Yeah. The um, they can they do work together. They're not entirely sharing the same database, but we're able to push a project from one side to the other. You know, a good oh. example is. Um, the union projects, we can't do those directly on um, voiceovers, so we have to push those to the over hub, right. yeah, to the hub. Um, there's, there's some other more complex projects that require um, special contracts um, yeah. that we'll need to send over to, to agents. Um, so, you know, there's... Um, video game stuff, maybe? There's some video game that. stuff. I'm, yeah. You know, I, I know about the software stuff. The, the <laughs> getting into, like, the actual terms that yeah, there's yeah. a... I have agents and lawyers that, are, that, that yeah. know that better, so Not my job, don't man. don't don't drill me on that part. <laughs> That's what they're there for. But our guest is Matt Dubois here on Voiceover Body Shop tonight. And uh, again, if you got a question for him, throw it in the chat room. Um, you know, I think one of the questions that a lot of people have had has to do with the ownership of the material that we as voice mm. actors are creating. Uh, that you know, say I go into my booth, I record something, I send it to a client. Uh, is it running through the the the, the voices uh, the voiceovers dot com site, and are you sending it to them? Are you acting as a middleman? Who has possession of that material once it's sent to the client? So all the jobs are submitted through our site, and we do collect the payment um, and we distribute the payment to the talent. Um, but we don't own. If you're talking about ownership, we don't own um, any of the content. That's either the talent owns it or the, or client, the, owns the it. client owns it, right? right? Depending on obviously the, the type of work. Um, and we actually, um, we just posted our terms of service on our Facebook page, which is not the most exciting move, but we know it's a hot button topic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Read the TOS guys. It's really important. It's, it says stuff like we own your firstborn child <laughs> in perpetuity and stuff like that. But, but yeah, we've, um, we've, we're proud of, the our terms of service specifically for um you know the con the, the content section and um we we encourage people to take a look and you know go take a look now and if you want to mm. quiz me on it live then go for it right. but it is it is um it's very fair it's it's nothing like you've seen on some other talent sites where they actually say that they own it um in no circumstances do we um do we own any of your data there is some language in there that is setting up for voice lease, which is coming out in six months. Um, that's our answer for not residuals for non-union. Ah, um, hmm, that's so, an interesting concept. Yeah. yeah. So that's something that uh, very excited about. We're not able to get that out in the initial release, but um, sometime towards the end of summer, we're going to be able to offer buyers. Talent can opt in on this, but uh, if they opt in, we could offer buyers the ability to license your voice. And then... Um, I already have a recurring billing accounting automation software, so we're using some of the code in that and integrating it into voiceovers.com to be able to bill people on a you know, 13-week or six-month. They could license it for six months, so we could help voice talent get recurring revenue. Wow, that's... Mailbox it, money. Wow. That, that's a really <laughs> cool concept. I, I haven't even... I don't, <laughs> nobody's thought of that one before. Yeah, that's different from a retainer yeah. that somebody mm -hmm. pays into. And you, yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. so it, it, it's... 
you know, because everybody in in so many industries, people are, are looking at not buying things anymore and, right, yeah. and, and leasing things or paying monthly. Subscription. Uh, subscription stuff, stuff, right? Um, so subscription buying of voice talent, in a way. In a way, of. yeah. Yeah, cause, you know, it's because some of the... Um, you know, even even some of the paid placement stuff. You know, you're 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 licensing it to them to use for six months. Right. But right now, it's like you have to set a reminder. You have to go do. I mean, it, there's there's extra work for you. And yeah. as entrepreneurs, if you can just kind of set it and forget it, it rebills and you get paid. Um, I love it. Yeah. You know, in this case, we're we'll be rebilling for you, and you get paid. We're not just keeping all of it, right, which right. I've heard is. It happens. The things that's happened. <laughs> we won't mention any names. Wow. But yeah. So, but do tell us what, what what the pay structure is and how someone gets paid and and, cool. and you know what for all the effort and time and money you've put into it. What what how does uh, voiceovers dot com uh, work with all this? The um, so we take we collect the money up front and um, the entire entire project the entire project money. So say it's a thousand right. dollars. Um, we're gonna collect all that up front. If the uh, if the buyer is using a uh, credit card, we're charging a five percent project fee. We can't say processing fee, but um, that's just because there's legal. Some states you can't do a credit card surcharge, right? But we call it a, a project fee, and um, that's just to cover our credit card processing, which right. is about four percent. Um, the default option is e check. If they do e check, there's there's no processing fee or no project fee. Right. Um, so that. Full thousand dollars gets deposited into escrow. Um, the the great thing about that is when people pay, they're serious. They're gonna hire. Um, so you know when they when they post, they're they're ready to. It takes a heck of a lot of the guesswork out of it for the talent. Yes. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do that, I want to trust this client? Am I? You know, is this gonna come together? Do I sh should I put watermarks there, yeah. on my auditions for this stuff? You know. I heard I heard horror stories that um, on another site it was south of the border that had people posting 40 or 50 jobs and never hiring so these people were you know flat out stealing or using it for demos which is really just another form of stealing oh, but well yeah that happens um, in our business the yeah, yeah. Oh, that's, i was going to keep going on how go, please go yeah, on, go so, on. Yeah. so there's that there's that thousand dollars and um then you know talent can audition they they would get um the that minus the 20 percent. we get a 20 percent um fee on our end for for the marketing and uh liability um the one of the cool things is we're going to take all the liability from um processing so if they paid with a credit card um they could charge back uh, up to six months uh if they do charge back we're not going to go and take that money out of the talents account we actually assume 100 percent of the liability mm. and um so we'll go through the chargeback resolution process and dispute with the bank to Make sure we get that. Okay. Um, it doesn't happen that much. No, but but you know, but you have a good guaranteed system like this, then it, it, that's going to help a lot. Once again, we're talking with Matt Dubois from Voiceovers.com, and uh, one last question before we start to get uh, to the break, and then some of the questions which are probably piling up from our our viewership. Yeah, we're getting a few. Uh, there's going to be the inevitable comparison to all the other. <laughs> casting sites <laughs> Sorry, <Ben. laughs> uh how do you how do you plan to really be different from them and how do you answer that criticism that perhaps you're, you're just like the rest of them <laughs> depends on what time of day you catch me and if i've eaten or not <laughs> <laughs> what mood you're <laughs> in <laughs> yeah. angry. i'm hungry um you know when people ask me how i'm different i love to to talk about it uh one of the things that uh i frankly is, is has been frustrating but i, I, I try to deal with it is um people just go how are you not like this person? You know, and they, they, they frame it in a way of, I need you to defend yourself. Right. Um, that's a tough way to start. It's, you know, um, and you, I've heard that a lot. Um, the, a better conversation is, is, is that, like, tell me how you're going to be different. Tell me what you're doing or what you're thinking. I love to, I love to, to talk to talent and agents and buyers about all the cool things that we're doing to actually make it better. Um, you know, with, Decipher VO and in, 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 in making the process for buying even easier um, with how we're aligning the, you know, our project fees are where we make all our money. Our, our, our membership fees just keep our doors open. It's the support staff, the hosting, the development. Um, we're not making any money on um, the membership fees. The, um, you know, because we're spending, you know, $20,000 a month 
at, um, on, project, on, on just Google AdWords alone and not even counting the buyer conferences. Um, you need money constantly flowing in to continue to make money. Yeah. The, how we're different is I'm only making, I'm making money when the talent's making money, right? The, our financial interests are aligned. Right. Um, yep. The more projects make, make we, us happy. That's the most important thing. <laughs> well, the more projects we get, the more money you make. The more projects come in, the more money you make, right. and then the more money I make. Right now, if this site was set up, if our company was set up where um, my well, there's 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 two other top casting sites out there. One of them has the majority of their revenue comes from membership sales, and the other one, a hundred percent of their revenue comes from membership sales. Now. Their financial interests are get more members. Right. Uh, more members will lower your chances of booking. Mm -hmm. So your financial interests are not aligned. Um, and that's where I thought that's not, I mean, you, the, I, I see all the talent members as partners. And um, that's where I thought we could do. There's, there's mm -hmm. a that's way we refreshing. could do better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we sent no marketing emails and this was all... We had 2,600 applications so far for a thousand open spots and um, all word of mouth. Right. No and, advertising, not a dollar and, spent. And only a thousand people on a site, the odds of you getting coming up in a search much better than say the 250,000 others are bragging about. <laughs> anyway. Definitely. All right. Hey, again, if you got a question, throw it in the chat room for Matt Dubois from voiceovers.com here on voiceover body shop. And we'll be back with him right after these incredibly important messages. Yep, this is VOBS. Proven anybody can have a show these days. What question do we get most often? Well, far and away, it's how do I even get started in voiceover? And we have a great answer to that question. Take vo to go gos free Getting Started in VO class. You heard right, it's free, and it's available online 24-7 at gettingstartedinvo.com. That's gettingstartedinvo.com. If you've been watching VOBS and thinking that you need to get in gear and start your own voiceover career, this is the class you should start with. You'll learn about the vocal skills you need, the storytelling skills you need, the equipment you need, and the business skills you need all in one single comprehensive online class taught by vo to go David H. Lawrence the 17th. This class won the Backstage Reader's Choice Award four years in a row. And again, there's no charge. It's absolutely free. Want to take it? Sure you do. Go to gettingstartedinvo.com. That's gettingstartedinvo.com. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. 
Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. And we're back with Matt Dubois from voiceovers.com here on VoiceOver Body Shop. Mr. Whittem, have we gotten several questions from our voluminous audience? Indeed we have, actually. Um, starting right here at the top uh, from Sean Cordy on Facebook. Uh, on voiceovers.com, I'm assuming. Are there a limited number of each type or each va- voice talent type accepted? Roughly how many of each are accepted, if that's the case. Now, when he says type, I don't know what he's referring to. I don't know if he's referring to male, female, uh, genre. style, genre. Yeah, yeah. That it's a little... Mm. But so, is there any kind of... Well, we've got 50 of this, so we don't want any more of those. Are you doing that? Yeah. The, yeah. Um, you know, I'm not great at, like, talking and speaking. <laughs> but I'm really good at numbers. <laughs> um, the What we did is we determined the thousand. That just wasn't a number we picked out of our... Out of thin air, right? right. We... Um, we looked at what the searches were and we made some assumptions based on um, Google says if you have if you get all 80,000 hits, you're going to get about 7,000 clicks. If we get like one out of every eight clicks, we're going to get about 1,000 conversions plus some of the buyers we have from um, Voice Casting Hub that helped with this. Um, we have a good idea of how many projects we're going to get um, and what that breaks down to each day. Uh, also, we have data from the hub. We know uh, we have a good idea of what the the makeup of the projects are. Um, 56% ask for um, male voices. 44% ask for women voices. So our roster is 56, 44. Um, and we have the data that further breaks down in a subcategory. Tw- your 20-something voices, 30-something voices, Spanish accents, British accents. So we have all these ratios and wow. numbers. And those are actually going to be posted for transparency in the um, in your portal. And mm. you'll be able to see what the project ratios are and what the roster membership roster ratios are. And our goal is to try to keep those close as possible. Um, we don't want to allow, you know, um, a hundred native Mandarin Chinese speaking people on the platform. If right. I can't give them the, the work to, yeah. to give them a positive ROI. Yeah. Right. yeah. So um, absolutely. It's not just limited to a thousand. That number didn't come from thin air. And um, that number is actually broken down to this many men, this many women, this many, accent this age category um so yeah there's the wow. there is a a lot of uh, there's a lot of um categories that were were very saturated early on and there's people that got um they received some of those um wait list and rejection letters that said try again in six months it's it's full um yeah, and there's you'll, some people you'll have attrition upset. i mean people will drop off they're not getting work because maybe they're yeah, you know, but are you vetting people at all? I mean, you want yeah. the best people on the site, so the the vetting part was um, was an eye opening experience too. There was um, some very experienced talent that thought it was um, we weren't really serious about that, and they submitted um, subpar um, auditions. Really? Yeah, yeah. and um, wow. they, they they then when we denied them, they they even called and said, hey. Don't you know don't who you I know am? I am. <laughs> and, I like, um, and you are. Uh, yeah. I was like, well, buyers don't care. You know, this is this isn't yeah. what they want to hear, and nobody cares what voice Unless you were for Sam what. Jackson, yeah. or uh, you know, Sam Elliott, yeah. or, you know, something like yeah. that. One of those Sams. So um, <laughs> that that was um, that was it. So we yeah we're vetting and um, we we have everybody categorized by their um, that they belong to certain voice categories. And we got most of that data from the hub. So we have a good idea of what, um, you know, what the range is. So. Yeah, I mean, coming in and making voiceovers.com, you had a tremendous amount of data and research backing all that up. That's, so, and that's, yeah. that's my thing. Yeah. <laughs> research, numbers, data. Cool. All right. That's where, that's my zone. Wow. All right. What else we got here? Joni Silva from Facebook says, so Matt, those of us who pay for the professional membership will be in line behind the gold members? How does that work? So, mm-hmm. if uh, you know, I guess maybe a little bit of a feeling like, well, if we don't pay, they're going to get to be seen first before us. Is that how it works? There is a um, there's a f- there's a couple hour head start for gold, so gold will get access a little earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not the uh, there's some other sites that give it like a full day. Um, that's just a bad experience for the buyer. Oh yeah, um, it's bad for everybody. I mean, yeah. coming in a day late, they, it's like, why bother? Yeah, the, so we're giving we're giving gold a few hour head start, but you know that's not the for those other sites. That's the main. That's a really all the value they provide is you know don't give jobs to these 
to the pro yeah and um or give it to them so late that don't even give it to them at all um we're given a few hours head start actually it's, it's so small that some of the gold members were asking for more but hmm. um i wanted to make sure it's fair my it's really important that everybody gets a positive roi um from this site uh that's you know that's why we're limiting the the numbers i want to make sure i i want to virtually eliminate attrition these recurring revenue businesses i have uh, others and that is the key to longevity is um attrition is your number one enemy and because acquiring um, new people is costly yeah costly. That, yeah, yeah there's yeah. a cost per per, per client there absolutely the the kind of general rule of thumb is but it's like 10 times more expensive to get a new client than to keep an existing one but um, it's even higher in subscription businesses uh oh wow so yeah the I'd rather spend no money acquiring talent and use that, return that money to getting more buyers. If I have more buyers, then I have a demand. I have the line out the door of talent willing to come in. And right. um, I've had some talent. How are you going to do that? How prove that you could do that? And I go, well, we've already proved that. There's 2,600 people <laughs> outside the door. Yeah. And we're only letting 1,000 in. So um, if you do something right, and um, then, then, then people notice it and, it makes a big difference. Yeah, give, give them wristbands. So yeah. be, you know, okay, you. I do look like a bouncer a little bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> really. One from uh, from Matt. Who is this from? From Marty. From Marty. Yeah. If you only need one thousand talent and had twenty five hundred apply, are you still looking for talent applications? So, yeah, that waiting list. Uh, you have no reason to want to shut down the waiting list, I guess, right? The you know I. We'll, we'll see how the we'll see how everything goes. You know, I yeah. I want to allow on more talent, but it's 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 only going to be it's going to be dictated by the project volume and making sure that um, again, if, if not just the gold members get a positive ROI, that the pro members do too. Um, I guess you kind of have to wait and see. Yeah. Right. See yeah. What comes? I would in say terms of the sales. definitely apply. Um, it's going to put you on the list and get you you know put, save your place in that line um, and. Um, I'll be, you know, again, the more projects that we get in, the more money, that's where I start to make money. So I want to get, I want to get more projects in and, and, and then allow more talent on and uh, right. we're either making a little bit of money together, a lot of money together right, or well, nothing together, right. but we're doing it together. That's, <laughs> that's the deal. Next question is from, uh, Terrell Kennett. Yes. Uh, Terrell asks who pays your 20% project fee, the buyer or the talent? It comes out of the, the so if there's a if the buyer posts a project for a thousand dollars, talent we get eight hundred, and that's that's where and that's flat across the board the way it's yeah. set up. Yep, that's it, and it goes. That's where uh, that's what replenishes the marketing budget first, and then there's a small amount of that that goes to the liability fund, mm -hmm. and then that's where that's where I make money on the rest of it. Okay. So if somebody posts a job for a thousand dollars and you're saying that the, the talent would get 800 of that, mm -hmm. is there transparency to know to the client knows that you're posting the job for how much yeah. is that it's for? Yes. Which is a problem in other places. No. And you, and as the, as the, um, and it's flat, there's no, we're not charging any managed service fees or anything extra. We're, we're very transparent on the, the talent we have to see, this is what they paid and this is what, this is what your cut is on that. So excellent. Next up we have David Davis. Uh, how are the talent profiles portrayed? And for example, uh, is it direct access for the buyer to talent, etc.? So I think you mentioned that earlier, like the gold folks, their websites will be directly available from the profile, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So every, everybody on the site will have a public profile. Um, that's going to be voiceovers.com forward slash actor forward slash Matt dash Dubois, like that mm -hmm. format, right? So a great SEO optimized um, URL. Yeah. Uh, and it's going to have your highlight demo and um, all, the, all the information you have in your profile there. They're able to um, click a button and contact you, but it's going to go through a contact. Um, we have a messaging system built in that's actually based off Slack. Um, cool. And uh, so it's real time. We're not, mm -hmm. we're not um, filtering the messages. So you'll get an alert if somebody's messaged you and you can message it back and that messaging stays within the platform. Um, that's different than some of the other platforms where uh, it's not real time. 
uh, and they filter it and they remove stuff. Um, there is a bit of an honor system there. We do um, we do monitoring though. So if you try to take stuff off the platform, uh, you will get in trouble. Um, the because that's how we make money and having that return. Um, if a buyer invites you to go off the platform for the next project, that's fair. Um, if you solicit mm. to take them off, not cool. Right. Right? <laughs> okay. um, that's all in the terms, and uh, I think that's those are reasonable and and fair. Yeah, you know, makes sense to me. Yeah. Uh, okay, J Horace Black asks: Is Voiceover.com more for non-union talent? I think you sort of addressed that a little bit before. The I don't know. It, it's is it more for non-union talent? Maybe um, is can union talent go on there and and um, yeah the we have a an option if the job meets a certain um, requirements and um, the talent has put in their profile that they are a SAG member and put in their member number um, if that job if they're selected for that job there's going to be a convert to union button that comes up on the top of that. Um, uh, if they're awarded and they can press the button and what it does is it overlays all their information from their profile and the job information uh, and it overlays it on um, SAG's actual form and it goes to a separate interface that we have for signatories that they think of like DocuSign. It, it's, a, it, it's, it's just a scan form. This isn't super crazy technology. I wish um, I wish we could use APIs and more technology, but SAG's not there yet, not even close. So um, we're, we're, we're using scanned in forms where we're just overlaying the project data with your data and it's going to a signatory who can, um, manually review it and then print it out right there, sign it and submit it. Hmm. And, uh, then it'll go to pending status in your, um, profile. Uh, we're holding the money. So then we can reroute it to the paymaster. And so there's a process there. Um, and we do make it easy to convert to union. We do want to, um, we do want to support the union. I definitely support the union. Um, I'm often critical of um, their leadership, but I support the union. Mm -hmm. All right. You, don't, you could go on Facebook and find that out pretty quickly. Yeah. <laughs> what else we got here? We got time for a couple more questions. Um, another one from Marty. When accepting talent, how important is previous experience versus talent? Boy, that's a. How do you vet that? Oh. Um, <laughs> what have the, you done for me lately? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, um, I don't have an ear for so. I'm not part of the actual listening to the auditions and vetting. Um, the, it really comes down to talent and work ethic. Um, previous, if, if you're required to submit a demo, but we wanted to do, we had the audition, you had to do a read because we wanted to make sure that it just wasn't an amazing demo and that you could, we wanted to be able to hear what the client hears um, or would hear. There, we didn't put a space on there how many years have you been doing this? Um, so, you know, if you're, if you're, if you work hard and you want to audition a lot and, um, you can submit a clean audition and you meet a certain level, then it's, you know, you have a, a good, a good, a good shot. All right. Well, Matt, thanks so much for braving the traffic and <laughs> yeah, coming all you. the way, uh, up here, up North, even though we're in Southern California, <laughs> Sorry, uh, to join us here and tell us about voice, voiceover stuff. Thanks, um, and good boy, you, you've been putting a lot of time and effort into it and, uh, looking forward to taking the seminar on how to use it all, which I, I, I've got to do so I can get in on the, the action, I guess is how, how to put it, but be uh, back at those tomorrow. All right. So, yeah. Our good, yeah, yeah, you're on the road today, <laughs> yeah, so it's not happening. Anyway, yeah, something came up today. So, <laughs> yeah. so it's voiceovers.com, and the applications are there, and uh, that's where you'll find everything they need to know. Yeah, and uh, we'll be doing our virtual ribbon cutting at VO Atlanta at the opening ceremony, so that's when we're going to open up the, uh, the buyer interface. Outstanding. Nice. Yeah. All right, so. can't wait. Matt, thanks for being with us. Thanks, Always appreciate a it. pleasure thanks, to see you. Thanks, thanks George. Man. All right. George and I will be back with more stuff right after this.
Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. So, the Sentrance Mixer Face saved a session for Harlan Hogan last week. Now, I was on a little, okay, nine days in the Bahamas spring break sailing trip, and one of his very good political clients had five TV commercials to record for a focus group. Now, it was a new client for them, and the client insisted that they be conferenced in on a phone patch, remember those, to help direct. The client generally lets him do this kind of work undirected. Well, with the Mixerface second input channel, Harlan brought the Skype audio into his headphones and the phone patch worked perfectly and so simply by design. The second channel audio is not recorded. How about that? That's quite an accomplishment for a unit that was really built with us voice actors in mind by Sentrance. And one of the best places to get one of these is at voiceoveressentials.com where you can get almost Anything made for us voice actors with quick shipping and Harlan's legendary customer service. VoiceOverEssentials.com. Go there right after watching this. Thanks, Harlan. Are you confused about how to set up and maintain a professional quality voiceover studio? No wonder. The information out there is mostly mythology. This is the best microphone to use. You have to have a preamp. You need a soundproof booth. This software is the best. Your audio must be broadcast quality. Consult with someone who knows the truth. Someone who's been there, in the trenches, doing voiceover for over 30 years. Someone with unparalleled experience with voiceover studios, who's worked with hundreds of voice actors and designed hundreds of personal studios. He knows how to teach and cares about your success in one of the harshest environments known to voiceover, your home. Dan Leonard, the home studio master. Separate myth from fact and get a handle on your personal voiceover studio. Contact the home studio master at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Hi, this is Bob Bergen. And the evil, the the porky pig. And you're evil, the evil, the loving, the evil, the evil, the evil, the evil, voiceover body shot box. Okay, we're back to say goodbye. But don't go yet because there's still stuff we got to tell you that's really important. For example, in two weeks, our guest is going to be Eric Shepard. Oh, baby. Who happens to be my agent. A man with an opinion. Yes. Uh, he definitely got some opinions. Uh, it's a good night to ask an agent. Yes. Anything. Yes. And how appropriate that it's on April Fool's Day. <laughs> so well, that'll, that'll be fun to have Eric here. Uh, Fool an agent. Yes. Here on the show. <laughs> Stump the agent. <laughs> it's like a daily thing anyway. Uh, let's see here. Um, we need to thank our donors of the week. And who are they? Well, you've nicely listed them here for me, which is very nice. It only took me six years to figure out how to do that. Appreciate that. Um, we've got Philip Sapir, uh, Michelle Blanker, Antland Productions, that's Uncle Roy, uh, Gary Bungartz, Andrew Kaufman, and Christy Burns. So some of the names in... These are names you've probably heard because I've read them many times because most of these are subscribers. They send uh, money on a recurring schedule yeah. using uh, PayPal, and it's very kind that they do that. Thank yeah. you. And we appreciate your support. There's a Donate Now button right here on our homepage, and uh, we'd love to, you know, if you can give us some support. It allows us to maintain this magnificent technical feat that we do every other week here to uh, bring you this show. So and I know we mentioned it last time, yep. but... Did you know that when we had that amazing studio 
to use in Portland, that incredible space, that was because of Karen O'Brien. Yes, so that thanks, was a, Karen. We a major you. contribution to the show. We really appreciated that. Yeah. Okay. Hey, we need to see your booths. Now, this is a picture you took. It is. This is the Super, Super Bloom. Bloom. This is the band... The park that's been banned. You cannot go there now because it became so popular. Is it Lake Elsinore? Lake, yeah. Near Lake Elsinore. It's called uh, Walker Canyon. This became so popular, you now can't even go visit it. So you have to look at this picture on our, on our show to see what it looks like. But this is the Super Bloom. Uh, I saw it on Thursday last week. Um, the Super Bloom is, in California is this massive blooming of poppies and some other... What are the purple ones called? Lupin. Lupin, Lupin. Yeah. They uh, just go for miles. It's kind of mind boggling, but if you want to see them, you just kind of travel north as they go north. So do you. You can go see them in other parts of the state. So it's like the Wizard of Oz. They're going through the field of poppies. Yes. Something with poison. I believe it is Instagram that ruined this place because (laughs) (laughs) that's where my girlfriend heard about it. And I think many others did as well. And uh, unfortunately, it became so crowded they had to close it down. But please, we want your booths. It's more fun to see your space. So send them in to the guys at VOBS.TV. Absolutely. Uh, put booth in the subject, and we'll throw it on the wall. Make sure it's in landscape format, not Instagram story format. Not vertical, please. Yeah. But my phone doesn't work like that. Try turning it. <laughs> Just it's, twist it. It's pretty, it's pretty simple. simple thing. Uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, we're live here every other week now. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do the whole show and then we split it up so you guys can, don't have to digest an, you know, an hour and a half of stuff. You get 45 minutes of a great interview and you get 45 minutes of more tech than you can possibly handle in 45 minutes <laughs> uh, for your home voiceover studio. So make sure you join us for that. And if you want to be in the audience, uh, all you got to do is write to us again at the guys at VOBS.TV. Make sure that you're, you know, what week you're coming because we're now in alternate weeks. Yes. We'll be back on again April 1st, and then April 8th and 7th is... 15th? 15th, thank you. Uh, so, <laughs> math has never been one of my, my fortes. Maths. <laughs> um, and, uh, again, you got a question, write to us at guys at VOBS.TV. Let's thank our amazing sponsors like uh, harlan hogan's voiceover essentials voiceover extra uh source elements vo to go go voice actor websites.com and j michael collins demos all right we also need to thank the dan and marcy leonard foundation for the betterment of webcasting uh also our producer katherine curridan who got us mad in here uh this week which was great uh, mike merlino for his Ace work in the chat room tonight. Yeah, thanks, Mike. We like having him around. Yeah. But we like having his mom around, too, because Sue Merlino is our technical director, and she does a bang-up job of that every week. Mm-hmm. I think we got her worked in just right. <laughs> Please don't leave us. That's right. Uh, and, of course, we'd like to thank Lee Penny simply for being Lee Penny. Well, that's going to do it for us here on VoiceOver Body Shop. You know, it's not an easy business. We're here to help you with your home voiceover studio because when it sounds right, it is good? Something like that. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO BS. Have a great week, everybody. Bye now.